Don't try this at home. While this may seem to be a standard disclaimer, it is perhaps especially applicable to the field of aviation, nuclear reactors, and other high-risk ventures. Around the world, certain unusually intrepid and some might say crazy people have taken it upon themselves to take ingenuity and recklessness to brave new heights. In this video, we're going to explore some of the most bizarre and sometimes blatantly illegal or otherwise ill-fated attempts to reach the clouds from a lawn chair, set up a home nuclear station, and other grand slams in the face of sensibility, or do not try this at home. Number 10. Lawn Chair Larry Being a couch potato may not get much done, but sitting back in a lawn chair while doing anything but actually relaxing may get you some serious, if ill-fated, media attention. That is, if your lawn chair is jury-rigged with balloons and thus equipped to launch skyward. American truck driver Larry Walters achieved such notoriety for drifting into the airspace of the Los Angeles International Airport and reaching altitudes of 15,000 feet in 1982. And what was Mr. Larry Walters piloting? Well, that would be a lawn chair fitted with a quantity of 45 weather balloons, which created a very primitive and very scary homemade airship. The results? They were fearsome. The balloons rose faster than Larry imagined, but he waited until he had reached a great height before he started shooting the balloons at a graduated rate with the pellet gun that he brought on board. Dangerously, some of his balloons struck power lines on the way down, causing a power outage for 20 20 minutes. Most iconic was his answer upon arrest, considering that the stunt was done in a chair, explaining that a man cannot just sit around. Soon released but fined, Lawn Chair Larry, as he became known for his little escapade, was lucky to have made it down with little more than being a little chilled from the altitude and, well, rather scared. Number 9. The Nuclear Boy Scout While countless kids try model rocketry, archery, or rock collecting as hobbies, David Charles Hahn's occupation as a teenager was a little more reactive. His atomic aspirations led him to spend massive quantities of time cooped up in a shed next to masses of radioactive nuclear materials as he worked towards the grand goal of building a reactor in his yard. Becoming known as the Nuclear Boy Scout, Hun amassed nuclear waste, clock parts, ore, and other sources of radioactive material and began building what amounted to a small nuclear reactor in the backyard shed of his family home. Posing as a university professor, Hun contacted nuclear organizations, including the Nuclear Radiation Commission, to get juicy tidbits on how to best set off nuclear reactions. After his experiments, his property had to be cleaned up because his experiments had caused radiation levels to be far higher than was safe. Number 8. The Flat Earth Rocketeer The monumentally bogus theory that the Earth is flat still hangs on the far-out fringe despite being unequivocally disproved and easily disprovable by conventional means, such as seeing a mountain fall below the horizon when viewed across a wide strait of water. However, one mad Mike Hughes of California spent years building a real rocket propelled by steam into which he vertically blasted himself into the atmosphere over the desert in this man-carrying craft. The purpose of his extensive rocket-building ventures is not exactly rocket science and instead can be attributed to a single goal. Hughes's rocket works center on the see-it-for-yourself model of determining facts rather than looking to the obvious. Despite coming close to death, Hughes deployed parachutes from the rocket and survived, albeit having a rough landing that inflicted some injuries. His conclusion? The rocket, with the words research and flat earth painted on the side, did not provide conclusive results. The solution, according to the backyard rocket, Rocket scientist? Well, that was to build a bigger rocket and get a higher view of the Earth. I mean, geez, if only there was some sort of space agency that could get on that endeavor instead. Number 7. Richard Handel What is the best thing to do if one finds oneself unemployed? Well, for starters, let us consider a few plausible choices. You could A. Find a new job B. Become self-employed or C. Throw caution to the wind and try to build a bloody nuclear reactor in your apartment. And let's just say that C might be the choice to select if you are looking for an expedient trip to a mental health facility in recognition of the obvious sanity and the inherent logic and safety of your idea, or maybe just the nearest hospital for the resulting radiation poisoning. The choice is not as far out as it seems when Richard Handel of Sweden decided to fight boredom and become more of a scholar, while well, certainly being no gentleman, by trying to build a nuclear fission reactor in his apartment building to try and split the atom. Once confronted by law enforcement, Handel admitted he was crazy to attempt the radioactive experiments, but was also sure to mention that he had it under control after buying radioactive material from Germany and over the internet. Those materials included uranium, americum, and radium. 
So, how was Handel caught? Well, he checked in with the Swedish Radiation Safety Authority to see if his activities were permitted. It turns out, no, they were not. Number 6. Cal Giordano Some ventures may be subpar, but Cal Giordano of Alaska took things subsurface with a quirky homemade submarine. And not only is the rather ramshackle machine that this enterprising do-it-yourselfer built designed to function as a submarine, but it's also fitted with an icebreaker in winter with blade mountings intended to slice through icy obstacles. The prospect of collision with ice while partially submerged might evoke concern, but Giordano intended for the machine to be able to handle whatever the cold waters of Alaska could throw at it. Given that the Alaska-based Aqua Maverick fitted the semi-sub together out of a variety of parts, including part of a buoy, nothing less than a propane tank for part of the body and an outboard motor, the machine was rather strange-looking, and less streamlined than one might expect from a professionally built submarine. Known as a semi-sub, the machine has planes that angle like tiny wings to force the front of the vessel eight feet below the surface, while the tail-mounted motor remains in operation at the surface with its required access to air. The boy cockpit sticks out prominently as a rounded form, while an electrically operated snorkel provides air circulation into the cockpit. Not only does the machine function in an aquatic setting, the presence of small wheels allows the craft to move on land, minus the requirement to use a trailer. Number 5. Man Carrying Drone Launcher Larry would be impressed. Instead of balloons, the much greater but analogous challenge of setting up drones to lift a human is represented in one strange project. The aptly named Swarm consists of a multitude of drones wired and held together, under which a seemingly rickety seating and control area is rigged together. The home-cooked vision of a drone enthusiast not content to watch drones from the ground, the contraption depends on its legion of tiny propellers to lift a man off the ground. Capable of flying for 10 minutes on a single charge, the manned aerial vehicle multi-rotor super drone, as the vehicle is technically described by its creator, weighs 326 pounds but easily lifts off thanks to the massive quantity of admittedly tiny propellers working in unison. The machine's propellers are wired to be counter-rotating, stabilizing the craft against the unwieldy forces of torque. Landing skids made of pipe run below the drone which look like a helicopter's landing gear. There's a seat in the middle of it all which holds the pilot. An inverted, hard bucket-like component acts as a helmet and apparently shields the pilot should a prop fail. Number 4. Fritz Unger's Sky Flash what is the most terrifying way to fly? Well, possibly Fritz Unger's way. The pioneering aviator has been working on tests to make operational an innovative but somewhat rudimentary jetpack device that blasts the pilot thousands of feet into the air with the help of a wing constructed from plywood in the prototype stages and equipped with a handheld control console that directs computers. The machine would have greater maneuverability and far more power than a hang glider, effectively turning the combination of machine and pilot into a miniature conventional aircraft in function. In fact, the system might be termed as a wearable micro-aircraft rather than simply being a wingsuit. You know, kind of like Falcon from the Avengers movies, and yes, obviously the comics as well. The entire flying unit weighs around 50 pounds at the prototype stage, but the machine is ultimately intended to go up to 25,000 feet. And with so much power close at hand, one might be concerned about the strength of the structure or risk of being burned by nearby hot fuel. Eerily, heatproof boots form part of the apparatus which allows the pilot to dip the boots into the exhaust to vector control. And I think we're going to give this one a miss. Number 3. Daniel Boria Launcher Larry was not the only person to get airborne in a launcher. A Canadian did it as well, but instead of just doing it for the pleasure of flight, Daniel Boria conceived the stunt as a way to draw attention to his cleaning product supply business. Calgary, Alberta is a fairly open city located in a part of Canada where prairies form a dominant component of the natural landscape. Such a location, with its sometimes notably windy environment, was where Boria decided to head to the skies in a bid to get attention. Fortunately, he did not have to be cleaned up off the ground in his makeshift craft that included a $20 lawn chair plus 100 colorful but enormous rubber helium balloons. However, what Boria failed to achieve in gaining as far as business attention is concerned, he certainly gained from local law enforcement. They were none too happy about the possibility of assorted home-built high flyer parts falling from the clouds. After landing, he was charged with mischief causing danger to life. The reason for the charge? Not his own life, but the concern that the lawn chair would take someone out when the balloons eventually fall following his parachute-assisted in-flight abandonment of the craft. 
Number 2. Home Helicopter Helicopters might seem to be the most challenging and even nearly impossible machine to engineer and send airborne from home, but in fact, a surprising number of classically constructed but tiny and rather crudely gained helicopters have gained traction. Felix Kamwiri, a resident of the town of Gobid in the African nation of Malawi, close to the country's capital, is an enterprising man who has been working diligently to design and build a tiny one-person helicopter with a combination of fiberglass, rotors, a seat, and a pre-owned engine adapted for the job. A tailor and radio repairman with experience in welding, Kamwiri became interested in constructing a helicopter after starting to work in welding. His childhood memories of seeing the nation's president fly in a helicopter they sparked his efforts. Regular police visits take place as the machine is, at least at this stage, not supposed to be flown. The engine in the tiny red, blue, and white helicopter that has gradually been taking shape over the hours of careful but sometimes improvised construction work is just 125cc, but then again, the single-seater helicopter is tiny. So tiny, in fact, that the machine can be started up, rotor blades and all ominously screaming inside the garage where it is being constructed. Number 1. Marvin John Hemer Most people might get SWAT encounter notoriety on their rap sheet from barricading themselves in a building or a car in the course of some illegal activity. But for 52-year-old Marvin John Hemaker of Gransby, Colorado, building a tank was his decision which was born of grievance and madness. Angry at city planning and ordinance decisions that impacted his business goals in a way unfavorable to him, the do-it-yourselfer turned to what some might call a domestic terrorist's approach. And pre-construction confirms premeditation of the June the 4th, 2004 attack. On his property, he meticulously constructed a veritable army tank from a modified bulldozer fitted with steel armor plating reinforced with sandwiched concrete. The total thickness was one foot. Cameras and firearms were added to the terrifying contraption, which proceeded to bulldoze and blast its way through the town, destroying 13 buildings and causing millions in damage. Propane tanks were fired upon, but failed to detonate. So I really hope you found that video interesting. Some crazy people in there for sure. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up below. And don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also, why not check out some of our other videos that are on the screen now? Or have a look at my other channel. It's called Today I Found Out. You'll also find a link to that on the screen now as well as in the description. And as always, thank you for watching.